All right, today we're going to take a closer look at the fundamental theorem of calculus and see how we can use it to construct antiderivatives both numerically and graphically. So we're not actually trying to find the function that um, the actual antiderivative of a function, but we're trying to construct it in other ways. Okay, so um, just to give you an idea, let's take a look at this first example. Well, actually. Actually, first, let's take a look at the fundamental theorem of calculus and, and remind ourselves what it says. So if we have a function, f of t, all right, and it's continuous on some interval, and f of t is the derivative of some function, f, capital F, okay? So f of t is a derivative, and when we integrate that derivative, what we get is the um, total change in the original function, okay? The antiderivative, right? So um, f of t is a derivative, all right? We integrate a derivative and we get information about the original function. So um, let's take a look at this first example now. And um, and this is a physics problem. And um, you don't, you, in, in physics, you'll learn lots of formulas for uh, equations of motion and stuff like that. This is going to show you where those, where those formulas came from. All right. Um, actually, we're going to do this without any formulas. We're just going to do this graphically and numerically. So, um, <clears throat> and, and the concept <laughs> of, the, of the, the fundamental theorem of calculus. So um, in this problem, we have a ball that's tossed with an initial upward velocity of 20 meters per second. Okay. And you're up on top of a 60 meter tall building. Okay. So, um, so we're tossing it straight up at 20 meters per second. And um, the vol ball's velocity is shown in the graph. So the velocity v of t is shown there. Um, and, we and we're asked to fill in the table with the displacement of the ball um, over time, okay? And in this case, where our frame of reference, um, we're taking d equals zero to be a ground level. So we're starting at 60 meters up because we're on top of a building. Right, and we're we're interested in what's the displacement from the ground level over time. So, um, so and so you got to remember that velocity is the derivative of the distance function or the displacement. Right, it's the change in displacement over time. Right, um, in in this case meters per second. Right, and so um, so velocity is a derivative, and we're what we need to do is find information about the displacement. So we need to integrate the derivative in order to find information about the displacement of this ball. So let me scroll down here a little bit. Let's take a look first of all at the graph. I'm gonna get my notes out here. <laughs> um, let's take a look at, look at this graph. All right, so in order to find um, the derivative, we need to, well, let's, let me scroll down just, well, okay, hang on. All right, all right, that's that's good. Just need some room to write. <laughs> all right, so by the um, fundamental theorem of calculus, um, we know that, um, for example, if we want to find the dis displacement at um, in one second in, um, we know that the displacement at one second minus the displacement at zero, which is what we're given, is equal to the integral from zero to one of v of t dt. Okay, so we're integrating the we're integrating the derivative in order to get um, the total change in the displacement. Okay, now we we know d zero right because we know the initial position of the um, ball is sixty meters up because we're up on top of this building. So if we want the di the displacement at one d of 1, we can just rearrange this equation, add d0 to both sides, so we get d0 um, plus the integral from 0 to 1, v of t dt, okay? And we're given, we don't have a function, we have the graph of the function, which is even better. <laughs> so all we need to do is find the area under the curve, right? We need to find this area from 0 to 1. Um, area under the velocity curve. Now, um, the easiest way to do this is just to recognize that each one of these grids, um, each one of these grid rectangles represents 10 meters. Okay, so let me write that down. Each grid 
rectangle. Oops. Each grid doesn't space there. <laughs> grid rectangle. Rectangle represents 10 meters. Okay, so how do I know that? All right, I can look at the rectangle, right? And it's it's um it's one second wide and 10 meters per second high, right? So um, I have 10 meters per second times um, one second, right? Just finding area. So um, my, you know, my seconds will cancel and each grid rectangle then represents 10 meters, okay? So we can, when we can get the units of the integral by taking the units of the, uh, function that we're integrating times the the units of the variable in this case time that we're integrating over okay so if this is 10 then you can see this is half of 10 so this is 5 so that first little trapezoid represents 15 meters so I know I'm starting at 60 and um, I, and I gave it an, an initial um, velo upward velocity, right? So it's going to go up, as you would expect, right? It's going to it's going to go up, but eventually it's going to come back down, right? The force of gravity is going to um, slow it down until eventually it loses all its momentum, and it's just going to be falling down, right? So, but at this point, it's still going in the upward direction. So, um, over that first second, it gains an additional 15 meters in height. All right, so we started at 60, we're going to add 15. So at um, t equals 1, we're at 75 meters. Okay, so I can fill out the table. So I can write a 75 here, and then I can, um, I can plot that. So 75, well, I can first of all, let's put 0, 60, and then um, 1, 75 is right there. All right, and then we can just keep going. So if we want um, the distance or the displacement in this case at two seconds, um, we can just take d0 and add the integral from zero to two of the velocity curve, okay? And we don't need to integrate an equation because we don't, you know, I mean, we could easily find an equation for v of t. It looks like a straight line, so, <laughs> but it's easy just to look at the area. Right, so here, um, this is half of a rectangle, so that's five meters. Okay, so we're still going up, right? We were at 60, and now the um, change in the displacement is the 15 plus five, so we have to add 20, 20 meters. So the integral of v of t from zero to two is 20. So at t equals two, we're at 80 meters. Okay, so I'll fill that out, and we'll plot that point. All right, and then we just keep going. All right, so um, I am just going to scroll down a little bit and give myself some more room. So you can pause the video if you want to go ahead and complete this. It's it's pretty pretty straightforward. But um, uh, let's look at at uh, t equals three. Right, we're going to take t t is zero, and we're going to add the integral uh, from zero to three of the velocity. All right. So that's 60. Now in this case, if we, if we integrate from zero to three, you know, we have this 20 meter um, before, you know, between zero and two is 20 meters, but now here we're, we, we've turned around, now we're falling, right? We're falling and so at t equals three, now we've, we've basically fallen five meters from our, our maximum height, which was 80 meters, right? So, um, in this case, I got 20 minus 5, so 15. Now I could also integrate. I could take. I could take d at 2, <laughs> and sometimes I do this. I just. I'm just doing it. Uh, sometimes I do. I, I've done it either way. But uh, you know, sometimes I could just take d at 2 and integrate from 2 to 3, and add that. Um, and add that distance, which is negative. So, um, but either way, we're going to get 75 meters. Okay. So at d equals 3, we're at 75. So we're coming back down, all right? So we've reached our maximum height. Now gravity is pulling it back down toward the Earth. All right, so let's look at four. Let's look at t equals four. 
Now I'm just going to, I'm going to take D at zero and I'm going to integrate from zero to four uh, V at T dt. Okay, so we get 60. And then I'm going to, where am I at now? At 4. Okay, so it looks like this is a minus 15. So I've got plus 15 between 0, t equals 0, and t equals 2. It went up a total of 25 meters. And by the time we get to um, t equals 4, we've come down 25 meters. So so essentially, the integral from 0 to 4 is 0. So we're back at 60 meters. All right, so we're back. The ball has now reached the, the point at which it was tossed, right? It's back at the top of the building. But we're going to assume that the whoever threw this <laughs> was reaching out over the edge of the building, tossing it straight up, and that it's going to continue to fall now because um, it's not going to hit the building. All right, so let's look at um, t equals 5. All right, so again, we can take the initial displacement and integrate from 0 to 5, right? Integrate the velocity curve from 0 to 5. So we're going to get 60. And then, okay, so we're at 4, we're, we're at 0. So we just need to add this next um, little uh, trapezoid. And so that looks like it's minus 25, right? So we went... Up 20, down 20, and now we're down the we're down another 25. So we're gonna subtract 25, and we get 35 meters. Okay, so it looks like I didn't fill this in. That's 30 or 60, and this is 35. So let's plot those two points. T equals five. We're at 35. Okay, one more. All right, t equals six. Whoops, six. Um, and so we're going to take the initial distance and, and add, gosh, I'm going to add the integral uh, from 0 to 6 of the velocity. All right, so now it looks like, okay, this next little trapezoid is about negative 35. Okay, so... Um, so essentially, if I add that up, so we had plus 20, then minus 20, and then minus 25, and minus 35, so that's a total of minus 60. So, so here we are. We're down at the ground. We're down at zero meters, okay, because we took ground level to be zero. That was our frame of reference. All right, so we're back. We're down here, all right? So we hit the ground. So that's the, that's the trajectory of the ball, right? It went up. And then, you know, we've had the, the force of gravity. Now I used, in this case, I think I used just a, you know, I approximated the force of, or the acceleration of gravity as minus 10 um, to get my curve, but uh, that's close, right? So that you can, but you can see this, this is what you would expect for the trajectory, nice parabolic curve. <laughs> so, so, um, so that's just a demonstration of how we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to um, basically simulate um, the t trajectory of a ball. Um, and this is actually how a lot of simulation pro programs work. Um, I know my son was, he's, he was, he's a rocket, rocket enthusiast and there he, um, uh, you know, had some simulation programs and, you know, they're, they're basically using this kind of a, 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 an approach to simulate, um, the flight of a rocket and um so but so that's uh that's the first example and um i'll meet you for the next example which is another um it's another application of um the fundamental theorem of calculus